I'm going to share very important message for every one of us for today. Who may ascend the holy mountain of the Lord? Who may ascend the holy mountain of the Lord? When God called Moses, and Moses went up to the mountain, Mount Sinai. Who else went up to the mountain of Mount Sinai? No other people. There was Moses alone went up to Mount Sinai. Moses alone went up to the mountain. And why the rest of the Israel don't want to go up to the mountain? And they don't even want to go near to the hill of the mountain. Because they were worried and they, with, they carry a fear with them and they feel, they feel the fear and they are trembling because the mountain is shaking when the times the presence of the Lord was on the mountain. So who may ascend the holy mountain of the Lord? The holy mountain of the Lord, you know, in the past, I thought, I thought it is the church of God. But in fact, the holy mountain of the Lord is more than the church of God. It is actually the presence of the Lord. So the holy mountain of the Lord is the place where the presence of the Lord. In short, it is the presence of the Lord. So how many of you, you desire to experience what Moses experienced. When he went up to the mountains, when he came down from the mountain, what happened to his face? His face was growing and the people look at his face was too shining and they cannot see his face directly. And therefore, Moses had to put on a veil in front of him in order to cover as a filter, to filter the light that shine from his face. Because he encountered the presence of the Lord. The Spirit of the Lord, it was so strong in him and it oozed out from him. That means this, the presence of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was so strong and it penetrated out and the light came out from his face and also from his body. So it was a very wonderful experience where Moses encountered. And who else? Ascend to the mountain of the Lord. How many of you still remember the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ? And at that time, Jesus Christ called three of them. Peter, John, and James. He called three of them, go together with him, went up to the mountain. And while they were on the mountains, three of them saw what? Three of them saw Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. Jesus, Jesus transfigure. Okay, when Jesus transfigure, what is uh, what what is actually Jesus transfigure? It's actually he was transformed into his glorious form. The glory of the Lord filled Jesus Christ, Moses, and Elijah they carry with them the imperishable body. Okay, a glorious body, the spirit body. And this body, is, this body is a glorious body. What happened to God's people? What happened to God's people when Jesus Christ come? You are going to inherit those who are prepared they are going to inherit imperishable body. So it's going to be a very wonderful moment because you are going to have an imperishable body and your body is going to transform, transform into a glorious form. But this only happened to those who prepare themselves. So look at book of Psalm, chapter 24. Psalm chapter 24, verse 1 to 4. So let me read this for you. Psalm chapter 24, verse 1 to 4. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, 
the world and all who live in it, for he founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may ascend the mountains of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? So who can stand in the holy place of the Lord? In other words, it's the holy presence of the Lord. So when the glory of the Lord come, the presence of the Lord come, who can stand in the presence of the Lord? Who can stand in the presence of the Holy One? The answer is in the subsequent verse. Verse number 4. It's very, very powerful revelations for God's people to know that the one that who can ascend to the holy mountain of the Lord, the one that who can experience the presence of the Lord, the one that who can become the carrier of the presence of the Lord is the one who has clean hands and pure heart. What is clean hand and pure heart? Clean hands and pure hearts are those who does not trust in any idols or share by a false god. The one that who have clean hands and pure heart is the one that who don't seek palm reading, fortune telling, or even astrology kind of sign. So these are the people that who don't trust in other false God, but trust only in the Lord God Almighty. So the one that who have a pure heart is the one that fully, fully devoted his life to the Lord Jesus Christ, fully committed his life to God. They don't seek for other power or don't seek for others' revelations, but they seek revelations only from God himself. So, be very, very careful on divinations. Those who seek divinations to seek the understanding from other sources other than our Lord, be very, very careful because your heart will be contaminated. So, don't contaminate your heart, but stay pure. Let your heart stay pure and do no wicked thing. Don't sin and do no wicked thing with a clean hands. So, brother and sister, we need to keep ourselves clean, pure and holy. Because those who prepare themselves, sanctify themselves, cleanse themselves, when the trumpet blow, they will hear the trumpet sound. When the trumpet blow, they will hear the trumpet sound. The one that who have prepared themselves, they will hear the trumpet sound. Now throughout the world, at different places of the world, different cities, different countries, different individuals, they started to hear the trumpet sound. They started to hear the trumpet sound. But only to those who prepare themselves. And there are God's people who heard in Malaysia as well. So therefore, prepare yourself for the trumpet sound. So next slide. Ascending to the holy mountains of the Lord. The one that who ascends to the holy mountains of the Lord, they are, they are the one that who soar like eagle. So when the time they minister to people or when the time they see the world, they are actually on top. They see from, from high, high above. They can see with the eager eyes. They actually see what happened on, on the ground. They see what happened on, on the earth. And they see very clearly because they saw on high. So this is the result of those who ascend to the holy mountain of the Lord. Their eyesight is different. You know what is the eyesight of the eagle? From very high very, very high above. They can see their prey and they can just zoom in and then they start, start to zoom in and carry their prey away. So in a split of second, they will just attack their prey. So those with the eager sight, they will see what's going on on earth 
and they prepare themselves, they are ready at any time. So as you prepare yourself to ascend to the holy mountain of the Lord, you, are, you will soar in the spiritual realms. You saw in the spiritual realms and you just like the, like the drone scouting, scouting the land and you know what's going to happen and when it's going to happen because you know the time and the season. Okay? You know the time and the seasons and you are prepared for the time and the seasons just like the eagle is preparing for the time and seasons. When the times come, it's just zoom down and so we take the prey. So, let's God's people who hear the sounds of the trumpet soar on high and relax. So those who prepare themselves, they are not struggling in the realms. They are, they are soaring in spiritual realms. They are soaring and they are observing and they observe where is their enemy. And when they see the enemies coming, they sound the alarm. So, brother and sister, just as Prophet Nijo had prophesied, some among us will rise up to be the prophet and also prophetess. And you will speak the word of prophecy because you prepare yourself and you rise up. You rise up to the holy mountains of the Lord. You have ascending. Okay, you have ascended to the holy mountain of the Lord and you see from above, you see from top, and you survey the land, you scout the land. And those who saw on high, they will warn the people of the Lord. And not only they will warn the people of the Lord, they see what is coming, they prepare the people of the Lord. Look at the book of 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3. Beloved, we are, even here and now, children of God. This is Amplified Bible versions. And it is not yet made clear what we will be after His coming. We know that when He comes and is revealed, He will, as His children, we will, as his children, be like him. Brother and sister, when Jesus Christ comes again, what's going to happen to us? When Jesus Christ comes again for the second time, what's going to happen to his children who are prepared? We will become like him. How many of you, you understand how powerful it is? How wonderful it is to be like Jesus? It is a very, very glorious moment. Just like when the mountains, when Peter, John, James went up to the mountains, they ascend to the holy mountain of the Lord, and they saw the transfigurations of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that glorious body of Jesus, Moses, and also Elijah, three of them, transfigures on the mountain and that's the glorious moment. What is this glorious moment? Because we will see him just as he is in all his glory. How many of you, you are very excited for this moment? When Jesus Christ comes again, you are going to inherit an imperishable body a glorious body, the body that cannot be attacked by virus. You know, when you have the glorious body, even there is virus firing around, bacteria that are not going to harm you because you already inherit a glorious body. So the one that who have the glorious body, you will experience a very, very wonderful moment. Because you are going to transform. We are going to transform. Okay, we are going to transform into a glorious form. You know, wonderful things going to happen when great revival come. 
Many young people going to rise up, they will go out to lay hand on the sick and the sick get healed and they will dry up, give us spirit. Okay, many young people in our church, those who are yet to come, they will perform signs and wonder and miracles. They will go out to perform signs and wonder. So, those who are already catch up in age, don't worry. As long as in the spirit you belong to Joshua generations, you shall also do the same thing. Okay? Those who prepare themselves, you belong to the Joshua generation, you shall also do the same thing, cast out the de devils, heal the sick, and perform signs and wonders. So a great revival is going to break out before the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we are waiting in expectations for the glorious moments that's, that every one of us is going to experience. Okay, a very, very powerful moment. And everyone who has this hope confidently placed in Him will do what? Purifies Himself just as He is pure. Brother and sister, there is a condition. There is a prerequisite requirement. What is the conditions? The one that who will inherit the imperishable body, a glorious body, with the transfigurations of their body, and having the light of God and also the glory of God oozed out from their body and radiate in the spiritual realms, when the devil see them, they see light. They see light. They are afraid of this kind of Christian. They, as much as possible, they want to run away and not to direct, not to have direct confrontation with this kind of Christian. Because the glory of the Lord oozes out from their body. Okay? In the spiritual realm, they see this kind of people, they try to avoid this kind of people. I'm waiting in expectation to see many of us to become like this. Okay? I'm waiting in expectation for this glorious moment when the Spirit of the Lord and the glory of the Lord pour out, fill every one of us, you become one of this kind of people and you go out and full of the glory of God. But what is the prerequisite requirements? I think the scripture itself make it very, very clear. The one that who inherit the glory of God is the one who purify himself. Brother and sister, you know why I, I urge everyone to prepare? Because when the time comes, those who want to prepare themselves too late already don't have time to prepare. Please prepare when we still have time. Now we still have time to prepare ourselves to stay holy and pure. To stay here holy and pure. And connect ourselves tightly to the Lord. Because when it comes, when the World War III break out, when the pandemic break out, don't have time to prepare. Okay? When the war break out, no time to prepare. When the pandemic happened, no time to prepare. Only those who prepare themselves, they will go out to minister to the people. Okay, they will go out minister to the people, a great army of God, because the presence and also the Spirit of the Lord is with them. A very, very powerful moment. So therefore, keep yourself holy unto the Lord your God. Because you are going to experience a powerful move and also the glory of God. So, actually this verse is speaking about the future transformations of believers. Okay? Future transformations of believers when Christ returns. And he emphasized through the full extent of our future state that has not been revealed fully. It only revealed partially to us. Because what? The Apostle John said, Beloved, we are now children of God, and it is not yet make, made clear what we will be after His coming. 
But one thing for sure is we are going to inherit a glorious body. So glorious body is just part of it. So let's say if you know if there is 100%, a glorious body may be just the 10% of what we have been revealed to, what have been revealed to us. So there are more than that. There are things which is more than that. And therefore, God's people, please, please prepare. Because it's going to be very, very powerful, very, very wonderful. How many of you, you get a glimpse of the glorious moment? How many of you still remember the parable of our Lord Jesus Christ? He said, some of you are going to ten, take charge of ten cities. Some of you are going to take charge of five cities. Some of you are going to take charge of one city. And this is true. It's not just a parable. When the Lord come again, those who, are, who have prepared themselves, those who are qualified, they will be in charge of the creations of God. And they will be in charge of nations and cities. Okay? So God will place them in the positions to take charge. So therefore, don't be blind by the current temporary thing that we see right now. Because the temporary thing that we see right now is very, very temporal. Just a short period of time. But the everlasting things, the, the eternal thing is very, very glorious. Imagine that you have been chosen by God and you have been qualified to live eternal life with Jesus. And you have been given the opportunity to manage the creation of God in certain realms of God or certain holy city of God. Is this going to be wonderful? Wonderful? You know, the thing that you're going to do eternally is not like repeating the same thing over and over again. But there are a lot of interesting things for you to explore in the whole universe of God. For you to, to venture and to take charge and to manage. What was the original plan of God for Adam? God actually placed Adam on earth to take care and to in charge of everything on earth. That was very powerful assignment that God had given to Adam. But too sad is what? Adam, Adam miss it and let go of it. And Jesus Christ come to restore all this. Some of you, you, are, you will be qualified to take charge of the cities of God. Okay? And therefore, God's people rejoice if your name is written in heaven. Okay? If your name is written in heaven, let God's people rejoice. Okay? This is the most wonderful thing that God's people should seek their name to be written in heaven especially in the temple of the Lord. So, let God's people ascend to the holy mountains of the Lord. You know, come back to this. Those who belong to Him will be transformed to be like Him. And this transformation includes both spiritual and physical aspect. And it eventually resulted in the ultimate fulfillments of the plan of God for mankind. Because we are called to be the prince of his kingdom. Okay, we are actually called to be the prince to govern the realms that God had prepared for his people to take care. So, it is not just merely enter into heaven. So, brother and sister, don't just, just think about merely enter into heaven, qualify for eternal life. But understand that there is much more than that. 
we are going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. How many of you use remember the scripture? You are going to rule and reign with Jesus Christ. So, let's take a look at the next slide. When he comes and is revealed, we will be like him. Your appearance will be like Jesus. Your nature will be like Jesus. And, and your attribute will be like Jesus. That's why Jesus says, all spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus, all spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus is given to you. So look at 1 John chapter 3, verse 2 to 3, and other translations, versions. Okay? Just now we see the Amplified Bible translations, and this is the message translations. Let's take a look at the message translations, how it sounds. But friends, that's exactly who we are. I like these translations, the message translation, because the, it, it says exactly who we are, children of God. And that's it's only the beginning. Okay, it's just the beginning. Who knows how we end up? What we know is that when Christ is openly revealed, we will see him. And in seeing him, become like him. Brother and sister, when, when, I, when I read this verse, it is very, very powerful to me. And it reveals to me that, wow, we will be like him. We, we will be just like him. And not only be just like him, we will rule and reign together with Jesus. And certain authority will be given to us. A very, very powerful authority in the spiritual realms. That's the reason why when you cast out the evil spirit, the evil spirit have to obey you. Because you have a greater authority than them. We will see him and in seeing him become like him. All of us who look forward to his coming stay ready. Okay, they prepare themselves. All those who know that Jesus Christ is going to come back, they prepare themselves. They prepare, they beat their body. They beat their body. They, they beat their body not to sin. Not to sin with their body. And not to sin with their mouth. Okay? Not to sin with their tongues. Not to sin with their lips. Not to sin with their mouth. And they live a pure life. Not to sin with their body with phonif phonification. Okay? So they esteem themselves from sexual immorality. With the glistening purity of Jesus' life, as a model for our own. So these are the people who keep themselves pure, live a holy life. Brother and sister, I envision a very powerful church in Malacca. A powerful church, the church that carry the authority and also the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the people of the Lord walk on earth as though as they walk in heaven. Very, very powerful. Wherever they go, they heal the sick, they cast out the evil spirit, they perform miracles, and people come to the kingdom of God. But this glory happened to those who prepare themselves, who live a pure life. Who live a pure life. So how to live a pure life? You know, we know about the story of Joseph. Joseph had been tested in many forms. He tested in his, in the, in his glory because he understand that he's going to be lifted up. Even the star and also the moons and the sun will bow down to him. And he already received the visions. He know what's going to happen to him in future. But he had to be tested. His brother betrayed him, sold him as a slave, and he was thrown into the prisons and he was falsely accused. And he was tempted with sexual immorality. 
he was tempted. Because while he was working in Potiphar's house, every day in and out, because Joseph was very handsome, and Potiphar's wife told him, come to bed with me, come to sleep with me, and drag him. And many times he said no. Until one day, she no choice, she had to pull him, and then she had to run away from this adulterous woman. And he ran away. And because of he chose to stay pure and honor God, God exalted him. How many of you, you understand that? God exalted him and God elevated him because he chose to humble himself, he chose to honor God. So stay away from fornication. Okay, stay away from fornications. Stay away from sexual immorality and you will be used greatly by God. You know, one of the scheme of the enemy is to attack the minister of God or to attack the servant of God is through sexual temptation, fornication. To bring them down, once any servant of God involved in sexual immorality, their light in the spiritual realm become dim. When the time they want to cast out evil spirit, the evil spirit will laugh at them. Ha! <laughs> you are under our feet. And you are just same like us. You trying to cast me out? Look at yourself. You trying to cast me out? Look at yourself. So, don't let your authority in the spiritual realms reduce. Increase your spiritual ranking in the spiritual realms. Increase your authority in the spiritual realms by living a pure life, a holy life. So, keep yourself away from any form of pornography, sexual immorities, any form. Then, you will see your fire slowly to build up. You know what is the fastest way to quench, to quench the fire of a Christian? To quench, to quench the fire of a Christian is sexual immorality. The one that who engaged in sexual immorality, they grieve the Holy Spirit. As they grieve the Holy Spirit, the fire of the Lord in them reduce, 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 reduce until no fire. When the times they want to minister to people, no power. When the time they want to do anything, they say the, even the word that come out, also no power. Because their fire already come down and the spiritual ranking also already come down. So therefore, brother and sister, because I see many of us going to rise up to become very powerful Minister of God, servant of God, by performing signs and wonder. But the Lord told me this. He said, speak purity to the church. Speak holiness to the church. Prepare the church because I'm going to pour out a great harvest and also the great glory to Hope Malacca. And you ought to prepare the people. Don't tell them the lukewarm message. Don't speak the lukewarm message to them. But speak holiness to the life of the people. And you will see a glorious church in this land. And the Lord wants to prepare us this. He wants to prepare a glorious church. A very, very powerful church. I'm waiting for the moment as us. Because I'm, I already see it. I'm not sure if you see it or not. I already see this kind of church. 
I see it in my spirit. I know that it is coming. A very, very powerful church. Next slide. In book of Genesis, chapter 39. And this is what happened to Joseph. And after a while, his master wife took notice of Joseph and said, come to bed with me. But he refused. With me in charge, he told her, my master does not concern himself with anything in the house. Everything he owns, he has entrusted to my care. No one is greater in this house than I am. And this the message of Joseph to Potiphar wives. My master has withheld nothing from me except you because you are his wife. How then could I do such a wicked thing and sin against God? And though she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her or even be with her. This was Joseph's life and no wonder God Lift up Joseph. God lift up Joseph. Because he keep his life pure and holy. One day he went into the house to attend to his duties and none of the household servant was inside. She caught him by his cloak and said, come to bed with me. But he left his cloak in her hand and ran out of the house. So brother and sister, when you are sexually tempted, what is the thing that you can, you shall do? The answer is run. Okay, I want to tell you a story. Last month, is it last month? Oh, last month. Last month, I, last month I went to China, correct? And uh, one of the third party suppliers who, who do the sorting for the defect part, and he said, oh, David, you come to China for several trips already, but uh, we haven't uh, really treated you well because they heard, uh, they heard from my colleague that I already resigned. They said, oh, you have not experienced the wonderful thing in China yet. Okay, what is the wonderful thing that they talk about? Yeah. Huh? And they asked, they asked my colleague, hey, tonight bring him to KTV. You know what is KTV? They say karaoke lah. They say, well, bring him to karaoke. Thank God, my colleague, his name is Alex. He say, oh, he is different. <laughs> 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 he don't go to... Then, then they say, Never mind, I will bring him to see the mountain and also the, the, the lake. <laughs> so brother and sister, you understand what I mean? They ask, want, want to go or not? They give offer. I say, the thing is very simple. I, I say, I, I don't go. I better stay at hotel and, and enjoy myself, relax. So brother and sister, you understand what it means? If you compromise and you suffer a great deal in your spiritual authority, if you compromise in sexual immorality, you will suffer a great deal in your spiritual authority. Don't play the fool with it because this is the most powerful weapon the enemy used to destroy the minister of God. This is the most, one of the most powerful weapons that they use to destroy the authority of the servant of God and destroy the influence of the servant of God and destroys the power of the word that delivers from the mouth of the servant of God. So stay away from fornication. Okay? Can you tell the person next to you, stay away from fornication. Be very, very careful on the internet portal that any kind of apps or any internet when you browse, stay away from those trap that may trap God's people into sexual immorality or, or fornication. Because God loves you so much. Okay, God loves you so much and He wants to build a glorious church 
and he wants God's people to prepare themselves. So, the one that who can house and host the glory of God, host the presence of God, is a clean vessel. Can you tell the person next to you, clean vessel? Okay, clean vessel. Look at First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 3 to 5. It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Okay, look at your phone. Anyone that who will cause you, you check your contact. Anyone who is in your phone that will probably cause you to fall into sexual sin, delete these people from the phone. Cut off your communication with them. It's not a joke at all. That each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable. Not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. Next slide. And this stated in Book of Romans. Book of Romans chapter 1 verse 26 to 27. What God say? Because of this, God gave them over to shameful lust. Even their women exchanged natural sexual relations for unnatural ones. In the same way, the men also abandoned natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Men committed shameful acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their sin. These translations, I don't like. They play down the... It is sin. It's not just error. You see, in the Bible, God already made it very clear. Lesbian, homosexuals, gay, all these things. It is, it is sin in God's sight. To God, it's sin. But nowadays, there are nations who legalize same-sex marriage. Men married with men, women married with women. And this is just like the day of Noah. Just like the day of Noah. And we have to free from it. So, look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. So, to stay pure, not only stay away from sexual immorality, but what other thing? You save food for the stomach and stomach for food, and God will destroy them both. The body, however, is not meant for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And again in verse 18, free from sexual immorality, all other sins are person, a person commits are outside the body. But whoever sins sexually sins against his own body. And do you not, not know that our body is the temple of God? And don't you know that the Spirit of God stay in us, live in us? So anyone who defile the body, they actually defile the temple of God and bring shame to the temple of God. Food for the stomach and stomach for the food. And how to, how to keep yourself away from sex, sexual immorality or keep yourself pure? If those who face challenges, fast and pray. Because man is not lived by bread alone. Okay, fast and pray. Fast and pray so that you can live a holy life. Brother and sister, I like to encourage us to fast and pray for yourself. Every one of us to fast and pray for ourselves. And uh, I have set a time this year 
I want to go on one, one kind of fasting which I never done it before. Because the longest period that I fast was six days without food. And uh, God called me this time to fast for 40 days. So I want to prepare myself for this moment. And I would like to encourage every one of us to set your own time to fast and pray. Okay? But I will set a specific time to fast and pray for 40 days. And that will be in August. August cross over to September. Okay? August cross over to September. There is a specific reason uh, why choose that period of time. But I want to encourage every one of us to, to have a habit of fasting and praying. Okay? Fasting and praying. But those who have a history of gastric, uh, when the time you go on fasting, you have to uh, have certain plan. Okay? Those who have a history of gastric, if you want to go on fasting, uh, maybe you look for me. Then I will advise you how you may start fasting so that you won't be impacted by your gastric. Okay? So, brother and sister, I really want to encourage us to fast and pray because, again, I tell you, things is moving very, very fast this year. This year is still a good year, even though we see war, but it's still a good year to God's people. Look at book of Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Romans chapter 13, verse 14. Those who sin, what happened to them? Those who sin, they are bound by the flesh. So the spirit man shall prevail. The spirit man shall be stronger than the flesh. I understand that it's not easy unless we pray constantly, watch and pray. If we don't watch and pray, we will be easily overcome by our flesh. It is no joke. Because we are living in this world and uh, the flesh desire, the urge of the flesh is very strong. And it is not so easy to overcome it. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ and do not think about how to gratify the desire of the flesh. What is God gratifying of the desire of the flesh? What is the desire of the flesh? The feel. How, how your body feel it. Your body feel hunger. Your body feel certain sensations. These are gratifying of the flesh. So God's people need to wash up and pray. Constantly praying. I like to encourage every one of us to speak in tongues daily. Every day, spend some time to pray in tongues. Because when you pray in tongues, the spirit within you utters the mystery of God. Okay? When he utter the mystery of God, he pray for you. Pray for you with the unknown message, the message which is unknown to the devil. And it protect you. So, watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. Can you help me to remind the brother and sister next to you? Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. You know, in book of Psalm. 119 verse 9. This is how God's people live a pure life. How can a young person, actually originals young man, okay? Or, but nowadays the translations have evolved with different versions because of 
what happened in US. When young men, they don't put young men, they just change it to young person. Stay on the path of purity by living according to your word. By living according to God's word. How can a young man, how can a young woman, how can a young lady live a pure life? By living according to your word. So therefore, God's people ought to memorize the Bible. Memorize the scripture. So that when the temptation come, then when temptation come, you are living by the word and the word can counter it. Amen. You know, in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such thing. Think about such thing. So God wants us to season our mind, our thought. Think about the good thing. Think about the admirable thing. Think about the truth. Think about what is pure. Think about what is right. Think about what is noble. And these are the things that God wants us to saturate. But how to saturate our mind with all this? We have to read our Bible. Fill ourselves with the Word of God so that our mind will be saturated with the Word of God. And our words, our mouth, our lips will be saturated, will come out like the spring of water of the living Word of God. So next slide, summary. How to live a pure life. God's people, how to live a pure life? One of the most important things for God's people. Avoid sexual immorality. If any one of you have done it before in the past, repent from your sin and God will restore you. God will restore you and you need a long process to come up again. Okay? You may take a long process to come up again, but you need to beat your body and make it your slave. Avoid sexual immorality because we are going to build a very powerful church, a glorious church, and all God's people should stay their life pure and holy unto the Lord because we are going to witness a very powerful church. So therefore, number one is very, very critical for our church. Learn to control your body in a holy and honorable way. Okay? All these are the scriptures. This slide will be given to everyone through the WhatsApp group. Clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus Christ. That means you believe in Jesus Christ, the righteousness of Lord Jesus Christ is in you. You clothe the righteousness of the Lord Jesus Christ in you. And the fourth thing, living according to God's word. Not just hear the word of God, not just not just memorize the word of God, but meditate on it day and night. Meditate on the word of God day and night. And your life will be transformed. Okay? Season our thought with whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, and admirable. And think about all these things, which is excellent and praiseworthy. As God's people have done all these things to stay a pure and holy life, what are, what are the outcomes? What are the outcomes of those who live a pure life? Next slide. What are the outcomes of those who live a pure life? In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21, and this is the verse that have been shared many times. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Those who cleanse themselves from the later will be instruments for special purposes. Made holy, 
useful to the master and prepared to do any good work. As you cleanse yourself, sanctify yourself, the glory of the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord rests upon you, you go out to minister to the people with power. Can you tell the person next to you, power? power. You go out to minister to the people with power because the anointing of the Lord is with you. So this kind of thing that's going to happen is not just limited to the pastor, it's not just limited to the prophet, but to any believer who prepare themselves as a clean vessel. Because God has said this, instrument for special purposes, but the qualification is the one that who cleanse themselves. The one that who cleanse themselves, they will carry with them the power to minister to the people they will speak the word of prophecy. They will speak the word of knowledge. They will speak the word of wisdom. They will have discerning spirit. They will lay hand on the sick and the sick will get healed. And they will drive out the U.S. spirit. And they will perform signs and wonder. And they will speak the glorious kingdom of God. In Jesus' name. And you shall be the people who have been called by God to do such kind of thing. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Do everything without grumbling or arguing, so that you may become blameless and pure. Children of God without fault in a rough and crooked generation. Then you shall shine among them like star in the sky. Brother and sister, some of us will shine like star in the sky because you keep yourself pure, holy unto the Lord. And you will be given great authority to manage cities in the spiritual realms. You will be given great authority to manage the creations of God in certain realms. Blessed are those who hear the voice of the Lord and you shall be elevated and you shall be called the prince of the kingdom of God to manage the spiritual inheritance that have been endowed to you. So brother and sister, some of you, you have been called and you are blessed because this is a very, 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 very amazing spiritual anointing, spiritual blessing, spiritual inheritance that God has been, God has given to you. And you are going to receive it when the glorious moment of the Lord Jesus Christ come and your body is going to be transformed and you have been given much authority to in charge and to manage it is not just go to heaven. It is not just having eternal life. Much more than that. Much more than that. The very, very glorious thing that happened to God's people. A very, very powerful thing that's for God's people. So therefore, don't exchange with the temporary thing on earth. Don't just satisfied with the gratifications which is temporal. Don't just look for the temporal gratifications. But prepare yourself because time is short. As you have seen, Iran attacked Israel. This is the beginning of the war. Before that, there are just signs. But now, the war has begun. And God's people shall prepare. From now on, watch and pray every day. Speak in tongues every day. Pray every day. 
Seek the face of the Lord every day. Seek the face of the Lord every day. We don't have much time left. Seek the face of the Lord every day. Seek the face of the Lord every day. Brother and sister, let us take this time to pray. I'd like you to pray for yourself and make the decisions in your life that you will seek the face of the Lord every day. Pray to the Lord every day. Let us pray. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke the evil spirit which is here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you listen and I rebuke you and I command you to get out from this place. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to get out from this place. I command you to leave God's people and you cannot touch God's people and you have no authority over God's people. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I rebuke you with the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father, I pray for my beloved brother and sister. I pray for my beloved brother and sister that they shall be filled by your Holy Spirit to do your will, to do your will and to glorify your name, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, God, your people shall rise up, Lord. And every curse be broken right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, those who have been cursed due to the generation curse, be broken right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, all curses be broken right now in Jesus' name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, your people are set free and your people rise up to glorify your name. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I pray for the hunger of the Lord to happen in our lives. I pray for the fire of the Lord to fill us, Lord. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, fire of the Lord fill us, Lord. Fill every one of us, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. All glory be unto you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.